Hello and welcome to SGN Tech Forum. So let's continue from our earlier video, ASA Essential. And uh, in ASA Essential, we did essential configuration like SSH, SNMP, NetFlow, Span, Syslog, and Packet Tracer, right? So now what happened, this ASA is sending all the logs to a Syslog server. And in this video, we are going to start a new topic. And that topic is fun with Splunk, right? So you may be thinking like, am I watching old video? No, we'll continue from there and continue building up uh, what we did so far. Okay, fun with Splunk, as you can see. What we're going to do, as a side note, I'm going to show you how to configure a syslog ng server on Ubuntu, um, whether a Raspberry Pi or a, or a laptop. And then we will start with Splunk. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to install a Splunk server. I'm going to use a free trial version. Uh, I'll install it on a Windows machine. All right. Then we will have a Splunk universal forwarder, which is a small uh, um, is a CPU. I, I mean, it's not very resource intensive. It's a lightweight agent sitting on um, on the on the places where you have the data, right? The data which you want to input to the Splunk server so that you can index it, crunch it, and visualize it. Uh, so this universal forwarders, they will be sitting on the sources where we have, we have our data storage, and which is generally a Linux machine or Windows. <coughs> then we will, uh, I'll show you how to uh, input data from forwarder. So what rules you need to create. And then finally, we'll come back to the Splunk dashboard again and see if we can manage the forwarder uh, status and and also we can crunch that data index that data search that data all those things so this is not going to be very uh, splunk uh, intensive video but a lightweight good for you to get started okay and, and at the same time finally i'll give you some forward forwarder troubleshooting tips because many a times forwarders uh, once you set up the channel after some time you may see that forwarder is not sending data so how to troubleshoot that i'll show you that okay so quickly, let's first review the syslog ng server configuration requirement, okay? So this is for a Linux Ubuntu machine. So what do you have to do? You have to be, uh, get app get install syslog ng, and then uh, basically that will install the syslog ng server, and then validate if you can, if it is listening to port number 514, okay? You can also watch, uh, uh, validate the status by using sudo services status syslog ng. So syslog ng daemon daemon is started. It's listening on port number 514. Now what we have to do? We already did that. Actually, ASA is sending uh, syslogs to port number 514 or to this server. All right. So I'll show you that. And then we will talk about how to do in universal forwarder config. But let's first validate syslog uh, ng server. <clears throat> okay, so this is our ASA. Mind it, this is going to be a little demo intensive video. So please try to follow along with me. Okay. As you can see, ASA is sending syslogs to 192, 1.22, 1.22, and that is our Ubuntu server. All right, I'm going to show you past uh, IP address. IP address is 192.1 this and let's do net stack. So you can see this is already listening on port number 514 for TCP UDP. Okay. And receiving all the syslog data. Okay. Now it is our turn to um, install Splunk forwarder. So, to, but because before we do Splunk forwarding, let's go to the Splunk website. All right. So here I am on Splunk website, and I want free Splunk. So I created an account here and downloaded um, the Splunk software, enterprise software. Okay. Uh, not the cloud one. The Splunk 8.5, uh, which is the current 
software. You can say free Splunk and you can download. I already downloaded it, so I'm not going to download it again. As you can see, this is a 60 day free trial for Splunk Enterprise. This is what I downloaded and installed on a Windows machine. Okay. So here is your main Splunk dashboard. What we are going to do, we are going to do a couple of things. Uh, first is we are going to make this server listen for data stream, right? You can have, you, you can multiple ways you can add data. Like here, if you click, click on add data, there are multiple options. I'm going to skip the tour. You can do networking, you can do OS and <clears throat> upload. You can actually upload the data. So if you have like a, um, a compressed file, CSV file, you can actually upload. But that's not very scalable way, right? We want a, a data to be like continuously sent as a stream and then Splunk to do all those indexing and so that we can run our searches. So for that, what you have to do, you have to prepare your Splunk to listen on certain ports and that is called uh, receiving. Yeah, okay, forwarding and receiving. Configure receiving, okay. We don't want to configure forwarding here because we will be using forwarding agents. Only thing is I want this Splunk server to listen on certain port and that is port number 997, 9997. And that's the default port for Splunk. So I kept it default. Okay. That's all you want to do here. Now, since this, uh, this server is listening on the designated port, so now it is our turn to configure the universal forwarder. And for that, what you have to do, you have to download the forwarder, okay? And I'll show you from where to download the forwarder. So you can do sudo wget and uh, wget ip uh, this path so that it will down, get downloaded to your machine and then what you can do is you can copy that forwarder what you downloaded to a third party directory or a third party software directory which is slash opt cd uh, cp and then the whatever you downloaded copy it to slash opt then go to that directory cd slash opt and do a sudo, uh, uh, sudo package which is like a package manager for Ubuntu right and this is what you have to do you may need in curl uh, because it is running some background curl check so make sure you have the curl uh, utility installed and if not then you have to do dpkj reconfigure again okay once you do that it will install the software now finally yeah what you can do you can see when you do a list uh, uh, directories you can see there is a directory created called Splunk Forwarder. Go to Splunk Forwarder. Under that, go to bin directory. And that is the directory where you can start, stop, restart your Splunk instance, universal forwarder instance. So we are going to go to CD bin and say sudo Splunk start and make sure you accept the license uh, from command line like this. Otherwise, it will have uh, you, you will have to like read the entire license by pressing uh, page up page, uh, page down and finally you can validate the Splunk status check all right so i'm going to show you all this uh, on the forward itself <coughs> so let's go as you can see it is uh, i downloaded this forwarder here and then parked it to opt here you can see Splunk forwarder is there under the Splunk forwarder we have lot of directories right uh, all the configuration related local configuration related things are stored in etc uh, just like any ubuntu linux system but this is only for splunk related files all right but right now we are interested in checking the status so what you can do you can just go to bin directory and then do a sudo So Splunk status. You, you when you install, it will ask you to create a username and password, and that's the pattern. But this is the pseudo username and password. Okay, Splunk command not found. Okay, I am not in the correct file. Okay, that is the reason. So let me start over. I'm gonna say cd slash opt slash splunk 
then that's it and then splunk status that is splunk is running so my universal forwarder is properly installed right as i i was telling you that there are all the configuration files are stored in etsy so let's quickly revisit the st uh, go to system or maybe just list everything here you can see all the all Splunk configuration related files are here and you can work, uh, read uh, like instance config, licenses and even you can go to system, CD system and you can look at the local, CD local and here is your output config like where this universal forwarder will send the config, what is the server config look like, all those informations are there. But again, as I mentioned, I'm not going to go deep into this. Okay. So this is up to you. Now what we are going to do, we are going to configure the forwarding routes. So again, we are going to go to spunk.forwarder bin here. And let's go back and look at the configuration. Okay. So this is for installation. Now the rule setting, right? So what you are going to say, you are going to say sudo splunk add forward forward server and this is the splunk enterprise ip address slash or colon port and port if you remember we created a receiving uh, port triple nine seven so <clears throat> put your splunk enterprise ip address colon port number make sure you have the networking or reachability between forwarder and enterprise uh, server and there is no firewall of blocking and other things so this is how you will set uh, you will point your universal forwarder to the Splunk Enterprise Server. Next, what you want to do, you want to monitor uh, the data, right? The data in, uh, thing, what you want to send to the server. And for that, you have to do Splunk Add Monitor and then the fly location. So here, what I'm doing, I'm sending my ASA uh, logs, which is coming to the syslog server. At this folder, I'm going to send this to Splunk Enterprise. And when you configure these rules, you may have to restart the Splunk. And to do that, you can just say Splunk restart. That's it. You can come back always and check if your forwarder uh, is active or no, and you, uh, if something is wrong by using this command, okay? So now let's go back and check our forwarder. Look at the command list forwarder. Okay, you can always do help. So we are going to say list. Too bad it doesn't do a tab complete, but your session is invalid. So you have to log in, log in to your universal forwarder. Okay, so this is the login you will create, username and password you will create while installing the universal forwarder not your enterprise uh, Splunk uh, username and password. But for me, both are same. I reuse the username and password. And here you can see after putting that credentials, I can see this is my active forwarder, what I configured uh, uh, using port number. And is there any inactive forwarder? No. So we are good. So this is how you are going to create the forwarder. And now let's validate if this data is showing up or if this forwarder is showing up in Splunk Enterprise or not. And for that, what you can do, you can go to dashboard. Your dashboard may be empty, okay? So what you can do, you can create a dashboard. Uh, okay, let's go back to search first, okay? And here you can come and say data summary. A quick way to test your data inputs 
or by setting click on, on data summary. Once you click on data summary, it is going to look how many host that means forwarder is talking to this enterprise um, server. And if you click on that, I have two, one uh, which is sending um, the Ubuntu one which is sending ASA and that is uh, defined by this naming convention and then another is Ubuntu Pi. So these two data are being sent to enterprise server. Sources, what source we are monitoring, all those things are listed here. Okay, and source type, it automatically try to classify by reading the files by some existing rules and say these are the source type. There are various uh, pre-built source type like ASA, SNOT, all those pre-built source type is there. You can also build a custom build, uh, source type. Okay, so let's look at the host and try to load this. Okay, so here you can see all my var log firewall the place which we are monitoring on syslog ng server all these logs started showing here okay so and based on these logs here it has created some selected field you can select those field and create create a new search query right now it is just searching on the host name and you can see all those events nicely popping and getting populated here you can go back in timeline 24 hour, 30 minute, 5 minute, uh, everything you can see. You can create your own search pattern and you can also do some visualization. And at the same time, you can create a table view. So, so different ways of like uh, visualization, table format, bar chart format and all those things. But the nice cool thing about Splunk, uh, which need a little bit of um, uh, education about Splunk processing language, SPL, so that you can actually use these logs to create your search query or create a pattern so that you can present these logs in a meaningful way. And that's the end goal, right? Right now in today's video, I'm just going to uh, make you making you familiar with Splunk distributed model, what is universal forwarder, what is the enterprise and how you can bring uh, your logs here, but you can do much more uh, by learning a few uh, tricks in the SPA language. Okay. What else I want to show you? I want to show you, if you can go to the homepage, Splunk. Here I created the forwarder instance. So it's a snapshot. When I come to the homepage, it quickly give me a snapshot of my forwarders, like uh, who are, which are the forwarders available and how their data pattern looks like. So as I mentioned, I have two of them and I can load them here. I can uh, watch their data patterns and I can also click uh, on any of these and see which who, who's my receiver. So this uh, Windows machine itself is the receiver. So, so this is a cool thing to monitor your forwarder if they are sending your data in the uh, real time or not. Finally, if you want to uh, know something about the Splunk utilization or the enterprise utilization itself, so what you can do, you can always go to monitoring console and see your, how your enterprise server uh, is doing resource wise, right? Now, so basically these are the license uses, disk uses, CPU uses, and all those things for enterprise server. That means how the server uh, instance installation is doing health-wise. Is there any memory uh, pressure? Is there any CPU pressure? Are we hitting any uh, license or disk or throughput uh, indexing indexing rate threshold? All those things you can manage from here. All right. But mostly, why you come here? If you are not a Splunk administrator, you will come here to parse log for your application, and for that. Uh, mostly you want to create some search and reporting, create some search, uh, cool search indexes so that you can find a hay, um, a needle in the haystack, right? So with that, I'm going to stop this video and uh, I'm, I'll continue learning Splunk and I hope you will find it interesting also. So let's continue this journey. Thank you.